Paradise Now Church, Brisbane. Nineteenth all day long, at least until midnight. And uh, what's going on around us? Well, it is twenty twenty three, so it has to be misery. The prophet prophesies that it doesn't come to pass. He he's not uh, being led by the Lord, is he? You don't listen to that one. The average household now in Australia is showing out an extra $14,000 a year compared to last year in going on price rise, groceries, fuel, uh, rates, mortgage rates, blah, blah. That spells out misery to me. It just keeps coming. As of... 2023, as of the 1st of 2023, the misery just flooded in. We're only in uh, nosing into the third month. And we're seeing disaster across the board. With Hillsong and, you know, they were, they were known for their, that rape incident and the pedophilia and and the, the crookery that goes on there, now the parliament, the government's on to them for fraud and tax evasion. And it just goes on and on. Because they never, they never started on the right foot. We, we can't ever be as ignorant to think we're going to start on the, on the wrong foot and end up in the right place. The righteous place. No way we can walk the wide road and end up in heaven. Not even for a day. We can't get on that wide road. We can't go near that wide road. On, there's leaven there. there. There's compromise there. There's danger. The world is full of leaven. But we only, we only eat the unleavened bread. The word of God. The unadulterated Word of God. No compromise, no adding to or taking away. You, you can't do that with anything. You buy something, you can't go, if you're adding to it and taking away, it, it's never the same. Right? We want to keep the word in, in its uh, original form, bring it forth. That's why the Lord said that, uh, talks about it in Ephesians about. We must be grounded and founded on what the, the prophet said, what the apostles said, and Jesus Christ at the helm, chief cornerstone. If it's not like that, you start to bend things for mum and mummy and daddy and grandpa and grandma. You might please them, but you're not pleasing the Lord. We, we must be found by the Lord uh, well-pleasing we live to please the Lord, you know. That was Enoch's testimony. He, he's a man we can esteem to. You can't esteem to the people of the world. They're flaky, come day, go day. You know, you, 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 you can see it on the internet, you know. You, you see these young child stars and beautiful young people and they're in all the movies and then they show you 40, 50 years later. They look like demons that have come out of the abbots. You know what I mean? That's wide road. You know? If they put you there, they can take you down from there. You know? So we, we need to, to live our lives so the Lord will put us where we belong. He really knows where we belong. You know what I mean? I don't have a great swelling congregation because I don't want that. The Lord knows that. You know? I don't want that. That's a pain to me, you know? Because with that, you've got all these minds, you know? And that, <laughs> minds, it, that just spells confusion to me, you know? All these minds. And especially those who want to think their own way, you know? And then they brand you a cult if you say the congregation have to, have to. Put on the mind of Christ. 
That's the only way you're going to have a Psalm 133 congregation. You will not have a Psalm uh, 133 congregation unless everyone puts on the mind of Christ. Leave your garbage mind in the bin. Okay? Your first born, first birth mind. Throw it in the bin. It's not worth a dollar. And the traditions that go with it and the culture. And everyone said amen. amen. Throw it in the bin. Don't dare try to mix that with the pure, pure, perfect, infallible, unadulterated mindset of Messiah. Don't, don't ever even think about it. You're insulting him, you know. That's not pleasing to the Lord. Yeah, so misery all round. Uh, we see Turkey, four earthquakes in a row, and now they've been hit with a flash flood, cars floating down the street amongst the rubble of the earthquake. Four earthquakes and then a flood. You know, like you see those cars floating down the street in Toowoomba. Toowoomba's a feral town. It's renowned for incense. But uh, people don't want to hear that. You know, they call it the lovely old, you know, retirement village for the oldies, you know, the, the well healed and old. I mean, real estate, the, the world, the media tell you anything, won't they? Just to get you there. We don't listen to the world. Uh, well, we do listen, but we don't walk by it. We don't treasure it. We, we, we listen up so that we know, not what, we know what not to do. Yeah. So uh, I mentioned, I think last week, that the vapes they're handing out and selling top dollar, 10 times more nicotine than a packet of cigarettes. If you want to get off uh, smoking, they say get a vape, you know, that, that'll wean you off. No, it has to be cold turkey. It's the same with coming to the Lord, you know. There's no gradually getting them then. It doesn't sound like scripture to me. Gradually getting them there. You know, plant the seed, move on. There's no gradually getting them there. According to scripture, you're convicted of your sin or you're not. <laughs> and once you're convicted, I tell you what, it does the job. You know? It really does the job. It, it, you're not looking for the sausage scissors and the slaps on the butt and the nice talking. You know. I don't see that in the scriptures anyway. Any, any, any person, the, the apostles and that, uh, dealt with them. Just turn it off. The sister will put it out there somewhere. You know? Yeah. So that's what we, we want to um, put ourselves out there for Jesus, you know, be jealous for Jesus. Be jealous for ourselves and be jealous for our neighbour and brothers and sisters. But we don't want any harm for them. You know, the world, they don't want any harm for their children or whatever. They, they control them. Because they're limited in wisdom. They start to control, you know. No, no, if, if you love someone, set them free, 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 set them free, free, free. If you love someone, tell them the truth. No matter who they are, how close to you or how far away from you. Give them the truth. Don't try and lock them up. Set them free. Free, free, set them free. And then wherever they gravitate to, that's where, where, they, where they are and who they are. You know? And when you watch 
and you see where they gravitate to, you know whether you've lost something or you've lost nothing. I'm being nice in saying you've lost nothing because Jesus has other words. He calls them dogs outside the house. Yeah, two banks have crashed in America. The Silicon Valley Bank and the Signature Bank in California and Nevada. Two banks just... It's coming down. It's all... It's the year of misery. Hey? It's the year of misery. Australia has... I don't know what they're thinking, you know. They just made a historic defence deal um, running into $360 billion, you know, for these submarines. I mean, they need to think things through. (laughs) We do need defence, and and it's highly important, but uh, there's also other things. We can't just dump all our money on one thing, you know. Defend a, a country of poverty-stricken people. What what use are they in defending the country? And I said that in two thousand and one that Australia would become a third world country, and I called it. You know, gave the captain's call. Australia will be a third world country, and that was how many years ago? Twenty two, yeah, round about. So. Uh, AFL, another lot. They're spending 25 million on injury studies. You know, study about the brain and concussion. And if they're spending 25 million on on a research, what sort of money do these these clubs have? You know, and they're paying some of their they're paying some of their uh, they're paying some of their. Uh, uh, Players a million dollars a year and more. You know what I mean? The man in the pub is going to be paying sixteen dollars for a pint of beer. I tell you what, I, I'm glad I'm not a, a drunk anymore. I, I, I'll be in jail for crime, trying to keep up the habit. Sixteen dollars a pint, it's going up, right? I'm glad I don't bother with the stuff. That's for sure. Two in five Australians in their life experience sexual violence. Yeah, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. So let's turn over in our Bibles to Luke. There's something I want to say here and, and point out in Luke which I think is very helpful, very helpful to all of us. Uh, Yeah. Luke 15. Luke 15, verse 11. And we'll read down... uh, to about 19. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in in that land and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would have gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, And no one gave him anything. 
But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he was resolved that he was quite happy to be a servant. That's where the Lord wants to bring us. He wants to bring us down to that. We're grateful and happy to be a servant. Even though we are sons. But we're grateful and happy just to be a servant. But what I want to say here is in uh, verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. You see that? He didn't say, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go aside and pray that God will give me strength to go back and face the music. Is that what he said? No, no. You, know, you, know, you can hide a lot of things behind that word prayer. Oh, we're praying for you. Prayer, prayer, prayer. I, I like the word do. I'm a do man, you know. My dad said when I was only a little fellow, you know, five, six, he, he said, that little bloke, he's the last of the litter at, he's a doer, that boy. And my, my dad was no religious person or spiritual person or uh, lover of Jesus. He just said he's a doer, that boy. And I like that word do. You know what I mean? It sorts it all, doesn't it? You see how, what he done? You see who he, who he blamed? You see, here we blame there in verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned. <laughs> I have sinned. God wasn't sorting this. His dad wasn't sorting this. He was sorting it. And that's what's missing in the churches today. Ministers with a backbone to tell the people, you're the problem. And you need to sort it. I can't sort it for you. Sorry. Next. <coughs> Whereas everyone thinks the pastor's going to sort it for them. No, it's going to stay the same. The pastor can pat you back until you've got a hole in it. It's not going to change anything. It's the will. You see? Joshua said, you too. It hasn't changed. In the Old Testament and the New, you choose what you're going to do. You choose who's going to be number one. You choose who you're going to follow. You choose. Because you're the one that's going to give account. The minister will not give account for anyone else's salvation. That's why we sought out our own salvation, like the prodigal son. And and it was prodigal. Whereas the churches today like to think, oh, you know, th- this little, you know, wilting uh, lily, he, 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 you know, he got lost somewhere. And he was sort of just toddling on, you know. No, he, he didn't get lost. He, he was the prodigal. You go and have a look at that word prodigal, you know. All the way through from the start. He, 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 he. He, he, he. Hey? He said to his father, give me. He's in the gimme, gimme club. Hey? So he divided his sport and not many days after that, he gathered all his uh, stuff together, all his clothes and everything, and he went off. And he, verse 14, he spent it all. He went and blew it up the wall. He'd done his thing. He'd done what he wanted to do. He didn't want to listen to his dad. He didn't want to listen to his older brother. 
he didn't want to listen to God. It was a godly house. But he went and done his thing. And, and his earthly father said, well, this is the best thing for him to sort it out. Because this is what he wants. He's gravitating to that. That's where his heart is. And where your heart is, you'll always gravitate to that. You know? Whether it's Jesus or humans. And you gravitate to that. And you allow that to dictate to you. And that will decide then whether you're happy or you're not happy. <laughs> it's simple, isn't it? But I'm always happy till some mongrel comes along and ruins it because I gravitate to Jesus. See? And there's always someone that's not happy that comes along and try to have a poke here and a poke there and a jab here. Oh, let's have a look at the archives. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, what about back in this day and you done this and that? Oh, get out of here, ugly thing. They live in the past. Uh, try to make the vision. Try to bring you down. Don't bring me down. Ooh. Don't bring me down. Ooh. Don't bring me down. So here we have it, don't we? I, I, I. No prayer. He, he didn't get delivered from the demon of uh, waste, you know? And he blew it all up the wall. No. It didn't say that the, the father and his older brother were deeply in prayer and fasting. <laughs> Is anyone watching? <laughs> you know? Doesn't say that, does it? The churches of today like that. Carry on. Because they've got you then. Right where they want you. Because they're addicted to numbers. They're addicted to money. They're addicted to, to the praises of men. I'm addicted to none of it. <laughs> I'm addicted to none of it. So I'm not under that control. It don't matter if there's me and my wife here. There's two or more. He's here. There'll be me, my wife and Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That don't matter. That don't matter, Joe. But they've allowed themselves to be snared by the devil. See? And he takes a bit of ground there. Then he takes more ground as he goes along. And before you know it, you're in the company of Lord, Lord. We did, we did. Go away from me. I don't want to know you. And that will be the biggest shock of all, won't it? So we remember there very clearly, you know, when, when the mud hits the fan, and I'm finding it hard. I'm fine. Look, you only find it hard to do what Jesus says because you don't want to do it. There's no other answer. How can it be hard to do what Jesus says? You got the Holy Spirit, you got the angels to back you, you got the Word, you got brethren. Hey? You know, for me, it, it, I don't like to see people waste their time. You know, I think that's sad. People want to go to the pub. I said, look, go to the pub. You, you want to go to the gamble and pokies and be immoral? Go and do it, but just don't do it here. You want to go to sleep? Well, the preacher's preaching. Go to sleep. You know? Don't have someone waking you up all the time. Just go to sleep. Have a good old snore. And you miss the whole blessing. So you might not have even come. You could have been sleeping at home in the comfort. It's called freedom. Set them free. Free, free. Set them free. 
If you love somebody, set them free, free, set them free. We've got to give people, we, we can't lift ourselves up above God. God gives us all the choice. Whether you want to eat the hamburger or the fish and chips, wear the blue shirt or the white shirt. Right? He gives us freedom to, to go where we want, when we want. We have a great liberty. We have great liberty outside of crimes. We have such great liberty when we're not saved, we're not even registering with righteousness. Right? We're not even obligated to righteousness. <laughs> wow. We really get into the mud then. So let's go into the message today. We're going to uh, we'll kick off in uh, where we started. We're into uh, the S in promises. We're still doing the gap series. The gap series. There's a great gap between the narrow road and the wide road, but they're trying to close it, and we see that, and it's even advertised, you know, closing the gap with the Aboriginal people, closing the gap. It's just a letter. Spotted an article there way after, months after I prophesied, and months after I spoke. Uh, and initiated the gap. The Holy Ghost was ministering to me about the gap. They're trying to amalgamate the wide and the narrow. They're trying to make it one road, which is a one world church and a one world government. And that's the way they want it. You know? That everyone will have the mind of Satan, not the mind of Christ. Okay? But we need the mind of Christ because your mind's not strong enough and mine isn't. We need, we need a great mind. We need the master mind. Amen. Amen. I might do a series on it, the master mind. <laughs> the master mind. Coming to your town. Get your tickets today. Don't miss out. Limited numbers of tickets. All the drama they go on with, hey? Do miss out. <laughs> so we're going to be reading out of the initial, in the stability, the S. We're doing the promises. Because that's the P on gap. G-A-P. We got down, God's made us promises and we make God promises. When we signed the covenant with our tongue and said, yes, I will love you with all my heart, soul, strength and mind and my neighbour as myself. If you can do that, you will be saved. Right? No good giving your neighbour sausages and you eating Wagyu beef. That's not, that's not the heart of Christ, is it? We see that in the book of Acts where it all had equality. But just don't tell that to Joyce Meyer or Benny Hinn. Everyone had equality. Everyone was flying Learjets. You got a church of 1,200 people and they're all got a Learjet. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Well, actually, I know so. Not. But they all think it's going to be such. Or well, everyone's driving a roller. You know? Uh, oh, cleft lip, cleft lip dollar. I mean... Cre Creflo Dollar. Changed his name to Dollar. I need a dollar, dollar. Dollar is what I need. He's the only one with the rollers. You got a red one for Sunday and a blue one for Saturday. He's the only one. Right? He's no better than Snoop Dogg, that bloke. Right? He's hoodwinking him. Right? He's got them right where he wants them. But that's the just desserts of those who, who aren't genuine. See, the Lord allows all things. He, he, he allows all the, 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 the homosexuality and, and the, all the, the filth and garbage and wars and 
he's allowing all that. And to say he's not is to say he can't stop it. And that he can. Right? If he made everything that's seen and unseen without hands, but by the word of his mouth, he can stop every war and argument in town. Amen. And, and there'd be no measurement of time. It would be, it would be less than a quindillionth of a, of a mulladillion of a, a trindillion sepal bar second. <laughs> That's even further than infinity. If you know what I mean. I, mean, I exaggerate as my master does. He exaggerated a lot, you know. He said, what if you gain everything in the world and lose your soul to the devil? See, everything. Wow, think about it. If you had everything, you gained it all. All the friends, all the... Oh, just imagine. Have all these friends. Oh. Friends, to me, it just equals, you know, uh, headache. I don't, I'm not looking for friends, I'm looking for brothers. I'm looking for sisters, family. You know, when we gather together, you know, they sort of expect you to hug them, shake their hands. But aren't you family? Do you wake up in the morning and say to my wife, oh, how are you going this morning? You know? And, and then your, your, your daughter or your, your son's walking through the house, how are you this morning? I say, you all right? No, how are you going? It's, it's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. It can be even in the tone of your voice, you know? You can read in the tone of the voice. As Paul spoke about that, he said, I don't come to you with heavy words. I come to you with a spirit of meekness, you know, whatever. Whatever the situation. He said, but I could have came and put the heavies on you, but I didn't. Yeah? So, we're going to start reading in um, Matthew 7. Just sort of to get the feel again of the S, which is stability. Right? We're going to read Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. We'll pick up, this is where we were last week. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, and floods came, winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the <laughs> rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And... The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished of his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See? One having authority. And so we're building our house, our lives. We're building it and, and on the rock, Jesus, and we're putting on his mindset. That's part of building on the rock. Not what I think, not what you think. Because what I think is different to what you think. But what he thinks. See? So in all situations, in our judgments, and in, in our discernments, and in our relationships, it's always the mind of Christ. And that keeps us... Oh, look, you know, the mind of Christ and Christ himself, it's not miserable and down and depressed and stressed and, and, and undecisive. And uh, Jesus was never known to be lukewarm towards his dad, you know, towards his father. And the mindset of Christ, uh, the Lord took the time to write it by the... Uh, a human uh, means for humans, you know, 
it, it was done humanly. You got the humans to do it because it was for humans, see? and they wrote it down Amen. and showed us. Oh, look! You know, if you could, if you could read my mind, son, what a lovely thought would tell. Just like an old-fashioned movie. And it's just like opening up the mind of Christ, isn't it? When we open up the pages. Right? With a bit of Jim Crochet there on the side. Right? And we're opening up the pages and we see the mind of Christ there. Right? He said, I'm as near as my word is near. And his word is here. And where two or more gathered in his name, he's in the midst. And it's a wonderful to have the Lord here with us today. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> yeah. So, we're off to a good start with Jesus in the house. And so the rain came. Night came and the rain fell. Nobody wants to know. When you're old, when you're old, nobody wants to know. They don't. Can you imagine when you get old, you know, and everyone thinks old. Oh, and, and the mindset of the first birth, oh, I've got to visit. You know, I've got to visit because they're old. And, you know, are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry that we drifted apart? Do your memory stray? We don't have to worry about that with the Lord. Hey? We don't have to get bogged down with that. You know, when I get old and old and old, and if I live that long, the Lord has a reason for that. It's certainly not for me. It's for His purpose. I don't want people annoying me. Coming to my bed when I'm there with me slippers on and probably a big mess beside me or something. I don't want that. I want people to enjoy themselves. Because I'll have the Lord <coughs> and the Lord with me. I'll have my Bible with me, have the Holy Ghost with me, and the angels will be hovering around somewhere. Hey? They get all bogged down, see, when they get old. Because nobody wants to know when you're old. When you're old, nobody wants to know. Hey? That's the way that the world thinks. That's why we, we, we have this, this uh, understanding that Jesus is like a rock. You know? It, 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 he, it's so solid when, when we, we, we live our lives for him and we build our lives according to his mindset. That's wise. Right? Walking uh, in the light with the Lord. Walk, walk, you know, walking in, in the servant uh, Emmanuel's steps. That's in the writings of John, isn't it? Two John. Is it two John or one John? One John, two says. We say we know him and we love him and we obey him. We should walk as he walked. Is that right? Ah. So that was our grounding there. But now we're going to go to the scripture for today. Because this is the second part of stability. We'll always have that stability. It doesn't matter if it's the floods. It doesn't matter if it's the, the rate hike. It doesn't matter if someone's left you. Oh, they found a, a, a prettier wife or a younger wife. Well, they found a more handsome man. He's loaded. He's got heaps of money. He stole a lot of it. You know, he stole a lot of money and he has a lot of money. He drives a fancy car and he's as dumb as mud. You know, and he doesn't know the Lord. You know, and I've seen better heads on boils and all that stuff. But our scripture today with stability two is going to be Psalm 23. Because today we're going to deconstruct the word rock. Mm. Psalm 23, in the verse is 1. The Lord is my rock. The Lord, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He 
makes me to lie down in the green paddocks. He leads me beside the still water, restores my soul, leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence, in the presence, in the presence of my, of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy, following us all the days of our life. Because we made the rock our shepherd. Right? This is the, the stability we have. When you look at Psalm 23, I tell you what, it cancels out anything and everything that is miserable and bad in the world today. When you look at Psalm 23. How many people have want today? Hey? How many people have want? How many people are unstable? Unstable mentally. Unstable financially. Hey? Unstable uh, in their relationships. Their marriage is like three sheets in the wind. You know, how many people are in that position? It's because they haven't built their lives and, and that particular relationship on the rock. They're building it on their personalities. They're building it on uh, what the, the other one wants. We don't build on what the other one wants. We, as I said initially, we put on the mind of Christ. And Mary puts on the mind of Christ and Bill puts on the mind of Christ and then the house will be uh, running smoothly. Right? It will be beautiful. And when the, mu the mud's slung and, and the troubled times come and, and the floods come and, and, the, and the rain and the, and the winds blow, everything's sweet, isn't it? Because the Lord promised us that. <laughs> this is the S in promises. The Lord has promised us. He promised us, if you make uh, Jesus your Lord, He'll be your shepherd. He'll be your Lord and your shepherd. And you won't be on the one. But we have to make sure that He's the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. And he leads me beside the still waters. Well, there, there's no turmoil there, is there? The tranquility of the, of the still waters. There's no turmoil. There's no drama there. Right? Stability. There's, I always see a household in Psalm 23. I see a household... That is going on a picnic. When I read Psalm 23. <laughs> I see the Lord going with them. Going with the husband and wife on the picnic. Right? They've got plenty in the basket. There's most probably going to be food left over. For a, a snack in the evening. Hey? This, is, this is the household here. This is, if everyone and anyone wants to have a household that's got stability, it's Psalm 23. You can build a house, sketch out a house and write Psalm 23 in there and there'll be nothing but glory coming out of there. Hey? Psalm 29, 9. Glory to the Lamb. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a promise of His. But we can't have it unless we keep our promise. How many keep their promise to the Lord since we've come to the Lord? 
some it's one year, two, ten, twenty, thirty. You can't expect this to be fulfilled unless we keep our side of the arrangement. With the covenant. So we made a covenant. And when when things aren't working out and things aren't right, it's nothing to do with the Lord. He he always keeps his word. Right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall well I like to put if in front of that. I'd like to put a really big if, you know, in sort of like, in calligraphy style, in a box, before the, you know, just on the side, just have it on the side, a big if. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And of course we double that up, not wanting anything. Because he's dealt with the hunger, hasn't he? For the world. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. In the green paddocks. That's nice. Not the dirt. Not thorns and briars. Hey. Have a look in Africa. You can't see too many green pastures. Africans are a people that go. From one God to the next. Whoever's dishing it up, you know, it might be Catholicism on Monday, Voodoo Tuesday, Hoodoo Thursday, and some guru Friday. And it might be the Seven Day Adventist. Uh, then you might get a bit of Mormonism because they're dishing up, you know. Bibles that aren't read and and uh, food parcels get a lot in with the food parcels and vouchers and always handy you know the Lord does say you know to give and, and help people but he didn't guarantee anything of salvation from that. I don't read one scripture where the Lord said that people came to the Lord because they had a feed. I don't find one anyway. You might be able to show me a couple on your way in your readings. It makes me to lie down in the green palace. Leads me beside the still waters. A lot of people don't have the still waters, do they? No, they're unstable. They haven't made the Lord their shepherd. Or they haven't kept the covenant. See? If you deny me, I'll deny you. Hey? No? We all know and we, we uh, love. Uh, the Old Testament scriptures, you know, they, they, they seem to nail it. A bit different to the new. Hey? They seem to nail things a bit different. Don't they? You know, when you read Jeremiah and. Yeah. I'm going to read out of um, Zechariah's sermon. Can we go there? Zechariah's sermon. And I'm going to start reading a verse 4. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, Say to all the people of the land and the priests, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth, in the fifth I should say, and seventh month during those 70 years, did you really fast for me? For me. When you eat and when you drink, do you not eat and drink? 
for yourselves. Should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets? When Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous, and the south and the lowland were inhabited. See, are we doing it for him? Are we obeying the word? We can't escape it, can we? No matter how much uh, we try, we can't escape. We, we can't escape uh, the truth, right? There's no way in the world. So if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. If you do what he says, if you keep your promise, because he's going to keep his promise. He's going to lay down the green pastures. He don't want people worrying. He don't want people troubled. He doesn't want that. He desires that not one perish. Right? But he can't go against his own word. Right? That wouldn't be right for the Lord to go against his own word. What does it say in Timothy? Uh, what does it say? We'll go to, I think it's 1 Timothy. I'm only going as, as the Spirit. About 3,000 scriptures in my head. Right? He's just coming at me from all directions. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from sin. You see that? And then, of course, 2 Timothy 2, 11. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, he shall also, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. See? If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Right? That's his promise. And he promised, if you deny him, he'll deny you. If he calls out to you and you don't answer, you're going to call out to him and he won't answer. Isn't that what the prophet said, Zechariah, isn't it? Yeah. You call out to him and he calls out to you. If you answer, you know when we read the word, we're answering him. He's calling out to us. The word is calling out to us. When we read the Word, the Word is speaking to us. And who's the Word? Jesus is the Word. Mm -hmm. He's speaking to us. When we pray, we're speaking to Him. So when He calls out to us, right? we'll just zip over to um, Romans for a minute. Romans. And we'll go to Romans chapter 10. Verse 21. To Israel he says, All day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Right? Hey. 
And then, of course, we got Romans 10. And the verses 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings and goodly things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Okay? For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. He's calling out. The Lord was calling out to me through the Aborigine. The Aboriginal. He's calling out to me. He's calling me over. Come here. I was on the wide road and he's calling me over to the narrow road. I answered the call. And he said, look, I've got something for you. See? I'm going to bring you into my kingdom. But not only that, I'm going to use you to preach. Not only that, I don't want you to fear because life is in my hands. I have the keys to eternal life. See, when he calls, you, you, you see, he keeps his promise. He didn't just leave me to, to sort of be washed to and fro with Bible colleges and churches. He didn't just leave me without the word. No. He, he, he taught me the word. He showed me the word. I walked with him and I talked with him because I believed in him. That was the voice I was hearing. It was God. And he said, I've called you with a holy calling. In other words, a calling that's all about the truth. Who is? Jesus. Jesus didn't say, I am the holy. I am the holy. I am the love. No. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. See? And that's where the life, it all comes out, doesn't it? That rivers of living water, it, it comes out of the truth, out of the way. And when he said he's the truth, he's only really double emphasis. That's only a double emphasis on the way, by the way. So, uh, he's speaking to us. And we don't want to be like those in Zechariah uh, where it says, I, I called you and you, you didn't answer. So now you're calling to me and I ain't going to answer. Like Esau. He called out and wanted his birthright. But no matter what he done, it, it was a no from him. It was a no from the Lord. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? I mean, that's rock solid. Just that first bit. That's rock solid. You know, that, that's not... Uh, if the Lord is my shepherd, I may, I may not want. I might not want. I will not want. Shall is me, another word for will. Shell and will are inseparable. Okay? Shell is actually a, a, a little bit bigger than Ampol. I mean, no, shell is actually... <laughs> what? What did he say? No, shell, shell is a little bit bigger than will, actually. Because look at that bad thing that Will done to that comedian, you know. No. Oh, Brother Sal's going, oh, I'm lost. Don't confuse the people, Brother Sal's down there. Oh, the people listen to this, they won't be able to follow you, Brother, because they're dumb as mud. <laughs> <laughs> slow down. You think, oh, man. Oh, Pastor, slow down. You, you like Quicksilver. You're, you're thinking. No, Shell is a, little, is a good company to buy your fuel, but 
shall is bigger than will. Because shall always reminds me of the, going all the way into the future. Shall, you know? You think about that word shall. It's like a future thing, isn't it? Going on. But will is more immediate to me. If you know what I mean. You know? If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, today, this day forth, and forevermore. Amen. 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 See, that's all in the proviso that I continue with him. That's Romans eleven twenty two, of course. If we continue on, not flash in the pan, right? Because everything's going good, and then the Lord decides to slap you up the side of the head and chasten you, and even I think, oh, that's the devil. Well, it might be. He's using the devil to do it. He, he created the destroyer to do his dirty work. See? He let the devil loose on Paul, didn't he? Let the demon loose. And then uh, they said to hand, hand over that young man who was in an incestuous relationship with his mother, hand him over to the devil. And lock him out of the church, hand him over to the devil. Oh, he didn't cast the demon of incest out of him, did he? Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Hello? He didn't cast the demon of incest. He, he said, lock him out of the church, hand him over to the devil, and give him a good dose of, of the devil. And then he might realise how bad it is and repent and come back. Amen? Amen? But there has to be that repent, doesn't there? Amen. Otherwise it's just repeat. He gets booted out. You boot him out again. And I don't know how many times he can be booted out without being banned for life. You know? If you play up, you've got to go. You know what I mean? Suffragette City. <laughs> hey, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green paddocks. Hey, whether you like it or not. You might be that you might be one of those people that think they're really humble. You know? But he's gonna make you lie down in the green pastures. You know, you know what I mean? You might think you're really humble and say, Oh no, I couldn't do that. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to eat the stale bread and I'll save me money to give to the poor. So he said, oh, look, just get down and sit down there and eat the fresh bread and shut up, you know. You know, we like to think we had that false humility, you know. We, we, we're so humble. Until it comes to the offering. And then we see how humble. <laughs> right? You might, you might be the old, uh, I can't give, you know, with the offering. I don't see that in the Bible. Anyway, that, that's not biblical. No, you don't want to give. You know? Someone's standing in front of you and they've got no trousers on. I've got some old undies. <coughs> and you say, I've only got these trousers on. Sorry, I can't, I can't help you. Yes, you can. You can take yours off and give them to them. You can. But that's up to you. Not that you can't. I can't. Yes, you can. You can, you can do anything in Christ. He strengthens you. Yeah. Hey? And we, of course, we go back to the poor widow, don't we? With the two coins. Oh, I don't, they always use that. You know, you've got these, clown, got these clowns on the internet. Oh, they always use the poor widow, you know. And people suck it up and they're justified to think that, you know, they just want, they just use that to get money. 
Now it's a reality, the ugly, selfish thing. It's a, it's a reality. Don't be so ugly. You know what I mean? Facial deformity doesn't make people ugly. It, it's their rotten, stinking thinking. That's what makes people ugly. The way, that, the way they interpret things. Oh, yucky poo. You know? Get with the truth. Look, do you want it or not? Because it's all in the one packing. Sorry. You're not going to go and take anything out of the packet. Not in this church. It's all in the one box. Eh? It's called the Holy Bible. Amen. So don't be such an ugly thing. Leads me beside the sea, gotta get to get all this that the world don't have and the world want today. They want everything we've mentioned so far. We haven't even got in out of the second verse. And they want everything there. If they if they prom make a promise, promise to the Lord and be a promise keeper. Promise to the Lord. I'm gonna love you. Right? Doesn't matter. Uh, summer, winter, springtime too. Just loving you, my Saviour. We promise to love Him first and foremost. It'll just all dominate you. You know, it won't be just pizza. It might even be KFC sometimes. Hey, just shut up and give me the money. Uh, shut up and take my money. And uh, yeah, that's if we make that promise. He's going to keep his promise. But if we don't keep our promise, he'll say, you know, go and read Deuteronomy 28. Go and read Deuteronomy 28. You reckon God keeps the promises whether you do or not? No, curse you. Oh, it's sunny Sunday. Don't talk about cursing. That's part and parcel in the box. It's all in the box. And you unwrap it, you know. You, you, you've gone to Amazon and you've ordered something. And it's cost you an arm and a leg. Postage $320 and the article was 15 And you unwrap it, you know. Yeah, all the parts are here. They're all in the box for the one item. And that's the same as the Holy Bible. You, know, you can't take anything out. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work if you take anything out or you put something in and add to it. It's not going to work. It only works when you do it according to Christ. That's why you've got so many accordions in the New Testament. You know, it's all... That's why there's so many accordions. Because you're in accord with, according to his purpose, according to him, according to Christ's doctrine, according to, according to. Yeah, it's musical, isn't it? Like the old accordion. Da, 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 da. He'll never grow old. According to, if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Hey, they're on, they're on the brink. They're on the brink. People out there are just on breaking point, but they still won't make the Lord their shepherd, and they won't make the shepherd their Lord, and they won't make Jesus Lord. What can you do? Hey. So, our message today, stability too. This is the stability the world has overlooked. They all think it's going to be a natural stability. It's a spiritual stability that the Lord gives. And you, you, you keep your mind stable in the time of terror, in the time of, of uh, trouble. Hey? Not like the world. Because 
They, 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 the devil was so generous to, to, to them. Satan was so generous to the children of Adam and Eve that he said, you, you just keep thinking, thinking the way you are, Eve, and all your children will be the same. In other words, you chose me, and now you're going to take on my mindset. See? And then she had, Adam and Eve had all these children, and we used to be one of them. And we had that mindset, me, I, and my. I'm going to be someone. Hollywood servant, rooms to rent, and your name goes up in line. So everyone has that mindset, you know, looking after number one first. Never mind anyone else, it's me. I'm going to make that hot dog for me. Never mind my brothers over there in the sun. I'll make the hot dog for me first. Well, you should have made it and went, this, this feels better than eating it. And just put it down there. I'll make another one for the other brother. I won't eat till they get back. When they come out, oh, there's these dogs there, bro. And everyone's, oh, wow. You know, that's loving your neighbour as you love yourself. Amen. Not thinking of yourself first. All, the, all these little things make for still waters, don't they? You know, when you're doing things wrong all the time, you don't have that peace, you're sort of like... <laughs> Wonder what's troubling you. It's because you're putting yourself first all the time. You're going back into that, that uh, Pastor Eve mindset. And Adam too, well, he, he was just a glutton for punishment, wasn't he? He, he just followed it on. <laughs> You know, old Adam. Old weak knees. He just followed on. So you stay in that mindset rather than put on the mind of Christ and then walk in his way. That's keeping the promise. People say to you, oh, well, what's keeping the promise of God? Put on the mindset of Christ and walk in his way. That's keeping the promise of God. I said to, I was talking to Sister Sue on the phone this week, and I mentioned three things, you know. Can you say you're a slave of God? Can you say that you're a prisoner of Christ? And can you say that uh, you're, you're owned? You've been bought by Jesus? Can you genuinely say that? Because if you can't, I doubt if you're saved. Yeah, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Yeah, I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own. Yes. Uh, you know, can we say yes to those three things? A slave of God, prisoner, and a um, bought, owned. Just, just considering that bought, someone bought you, and they own you. It certainly doesn't leave much liberty for our own mindset, does it? Right? People don't want to look at it like that. They just don't want to think about those things. So they just don't go to a church that talks like that. They much rather go to a church that talks about, oh God forgives, you know, God is love. Oh, yeah, saved by grace. God's going to get you there. You know, you just pray and God will give you the strength to do what he can't do but only you can do. I don't know if anyone got that one, but God can't make your decisions for you. But I can guarantee you this, God's done all that needs to be done at the tree. 
That's how great he is. He he done it thousands of years ago. All is accomplished for you. All is finished for you. He didn't hang on the cross for himself because he was a bad boy. He compensated for all of your sin and your walk. He made a way. That's why it says we can do all things in Christ. We can do all things now because of what he done at the tree. See? I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Heck, he can't give you the strength unless you're willing. Amen. Amen. Right? We have to choose. And I tell you what, if you, if you are genuine and you're mouthing it and saying, yeah, I chose it, well, I tell you what, there can't be a- any comeback. You will have the strength. Instantly. Because he said so. Right? That's what he said. You can't say oh, two months down the road, oh, you know, uh, it's not working. No, you're not working. You don't have the mind of crimes. You choose and going back to your mind of Eve. Mind of the first birth. That's why you can't do it. Because you know, he, he can't endorse the power. He, he, he can't endow you with the power. Until we choose him. As Lord and Shepherd. Then. Instantly. I, I know this because it happened to me. The moment I decided in my heart. No one else was around. No one's there listening and waiting in a prayer meeting saying, Oh yeah, here he is. Oh yeah, Lord, we thank you there. Yeah, oh you're so awesome, Paul, you know that you're going to give that up. Oh, you're going to give that. There's none of that. There ain't nobody around. It was just me talking to God, saying, Lord, I'm waiting on you. You're going to en- enable me. Because I don't know how to preach. I, I, I don't know anything. But I, I'm, I'm ready right now. And bang, I just started preaching. Bang, I was delivered from the booze, cigarettes. Bang, bang, one, one thing at a time. Bang, bang, bang. Amen. And went on that way, knowing that the moment, as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, your will, not mine, and what happened? He kept, he kept asking God, didn't he? Saying, oh, there's got to be another way. Oh, look, come on, you know, you, you know everything. You, you're omniscient, omnipotent. There's got to be another way. No, he never said that. No, the moment he said, your will, bang, an angel came. Just like that, bang. Just like that. And angels are powerful. And that's what the Lord's saying in the scripture. The moment you choose Father's will, which is to do what Jesus says. That's Father's will. That's John 14, 21 to 24. The moment you choose, he the power comes on. The switch, like a switch and a switch, power comes on instantly. You can't fool God. He knows if you're real. He knows if you're playing games. He knows if you've got some other agenda. He knows. We can't fool him. And you just come a guts up if you're not real. And things will be worse than ever. Because <laughs> yeah. God won't be mocked by any created being. Not even that great created being, Lucifer. He was a beautiful thing. Hey? I reckon he was the beautif- beautifulest of all. The angelic beings. But he wouldn't put up with his rod. You know? be, be not deceived, O oh man and woman. God is not mocked. So when we say something in our, in our heart, it's best not to tell anyone. It's best, you know, at the end of the day, best to say it genuinely in your heart. And then people will see the difference. 
they won't have any, they, they won't hear anything along the grapevine that you've gone backwards to what you said. Because it's got to come out somewhere. Right? It always does. Comes out somewhere, and then everyone goes, Duh. <laughs> oh, no. Fair, thing. Anyway, moving right along. Stability too. Here we are in stability too. We were going to deconstruct, weren't we? The word rock, we might do that next week. But we got stability too, still got, we do stability three. Leads me beside the still waters. If the Lord, he, that's the way he's going to lead. Right? You're going to lead you beside the still waters. That doesn't mean no trouble's going to come your way. That means when the trouble does come your way, it's just like you sitting with Jesus along the side of the riverbank. <laughs> amongst the wildflowers. It's just sort of sitting there singing, I'll give you a daisy a day, Lord. I'll give you a daisy a day. Nice, tranquil, all around this turmoil, sinking sand, Euroclidons, and oh, what was me? You know, even go into a shop, order a cup of tea today, their face, it's the Rocky Horror Show, you know? It, it's just like, oh, it's, everyone's so troubled. Because they really value this life so much. It's like they're everything. They haven't given up their life. Therefore, when you don't give up your life, tail end of Matthew 10, 34 to 39, when we don't give up our life, all that stuff, you know, between 34 and uh, 38, all that stuff is prominent. You know, family, friends, that. that Jesus has a place somewhere behind them. That's because you haven't done, see? A lot of the stuff in the Bible is reversed. You go to the tail end and you get the meaning of what was said before. You know what I mean? Like if we have a read of Matthew 10, this is all part of keeping the promise, isn't it? Matthew 10, And you've got 34 to 39. And you see verse 38. He who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. You see? See, if you lose your life for Jesus, uh, you won't have any problem with... Uh, being worthy. You will be worthy. As it says in the prior verse. You don't take up your cross. You're not worthy of him. Okay. And then he, in... in uh, before 38, you've got all this conflict about family, friends, in-laws and outlaws, mums and daughters. and All, all that's uh, accomplished when we give up our lives. See how it's sort of reversed, didn't it? You do, uh, you do, thirty-eight and thirty-nine, and then thirty-four to thirty-eight will come to pass in your life. Otherwise, I'll still be, you know, cherished more than Jesus. But we should be. Cherish the Lord, my God. I will pick up my cross and walk. Giving Him all, my God, just to please the Son of God. You know what I mean? You're cherishing the Lord. 
So all that stuff before 38, it just goes down the drain. Because you haven't picked up your cross. That can make for a nice cross, you know, having to give up all that, family, friends, relatives, and putting them somewhere down the back. And not putting Jesus, oh, come into my life. Here, come over here, Jesus. You can have the seat near the dunny. I've prepared a table here for you, Jesus, next to the toilet in my restaurant. No, come into my life, Jesus. Come up the front here. This is the best table we have. In the place. Yeah, not next to the dunny. Oh, who's that? And Jesus sitting there at the table next to the dunny and all woofing out, you know, as he's, as he's eating his rissoles and everything's woofing out. He's eating his steak. And Jesus looks up and says, who's those up there? Oh, that's my mother and, and, and father and dad, and my cousins and, and uh, my grandmother and auntie. They're all up there. And my grandchildren too. Aren't they beautiful? <coughs> and Jesus sitting there next to the dunny saying, yes, they are beautiful, aren't they? As another drop drips into the cup of wrath. Tink. <laughs> no. No. He has to be preeminent, eh? That's how that we promised that. He's going to be preeminent in the covenant. We made a covenant. Made an agreement. No? Uh, uh, you sign an agreement with the real estate and you don't keep the agreement, you're out. You know, you sign an agreement, a contract, $50,000 or something, and then the fine print says you can't do this and you can't do that, and you do it, contract's not worth a dollar. See? How much more Jesus? How much more uh, should we be in subjection to the Heavenly Father of lights in whom there's no change or variation? Can someone say amen? Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Jesus.